So the pastor comes in and he said to me, what did that fellow say to you? I says, well, he was a very nice man and he asked me to come up to his office. I don't know what kind of office he has or what he's doing or what. He says to me, the pastor, you're kidding. And I said, no, why? He says, do you know who that was? And I said, no. He says, his name is Jimmy Patterson. I said, okay, you know, what does that mean? It didn't mean anything to me. He said, he's just about the wealthiest guy in all of Canada. He's worth about $12 billion. Hey everybody, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope you're all coming off of a great relaxing weekend. I know it's starting to get warm out here in Southern California. Seems like that all over the country. So we're getting into the uh, spring and the summer. We're in the spring. We're getting into the summer pretty soon. Months that we like. We know it's going to be better than last year. And uh, today is Mob Movie Monday, except it's not Mob Movie Monday because today we're not going to be reviewing a movie. Every once in a while you got to take a break, do some something different. Don't worry, we will be back. I know it's a favorite of many of my followers. Uh, we got a lot more movies that were lining up, but today it just felt like taking a break. So I'm going to do something uh, that's interesting to me. Hopefully it'll be interesting to you, something that just came up and I thought I may want to share it with you. Before we get into that, Last week, we announced all the winners on the big 500,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, there was a bunch of them, and uh, we, we mentioned their names, and they know who they are, and they're getting prizes. And uh, some of the prizes, five of them are getting a free subscription, one-year subscription to my inner circle. And I got to tell you something, people, everybody is enjoying this. Last week, we had a Zoom call. We do that every two weeks couple of hours on the call. We answer questions. We get into things that, you know, other people uh, are not aware of, things that I'm doing that I share with my inner circle per uh, personally. And we had a lot of great questions, a lot of things, a lot of encouragement to one another. I'm telling you, it's becoming a great community. Somebody really gave me a compliment. He said, Michael, this is not a community. It's a family, not a mob family, but a family. And uh, they're getting very tight knit, I'm telling you, and it's growing every day. So we got five people, I believe, that got free subscriptions, and I know they're going to be blessed by it because a lot of good stuff coming out of it. We're pouring a lot of content into it that people are uh, really enjoying and benefiting from. So look into it, michaelfrancis.com. It's my inner circle growing every day, and I think you'll uh, be blessed to be part of it. And if you're not into that, my crew, over 15,000 members, free membership, same thing, you don't get as much as me, but we still put content in there, and I think it's something you'll enjoy. Again, michaelfrancis.com. So, please continue to subscribe. You know, we're, we're very thankful, and that's why we do these giveaways. We grew 500,000 subscribers in just about eight months, which is pretty darn good, and it's thanks to all of you. And we put work in to try to give you good content, not only stories, but stuff that maybe can help you out a little bit in your life, and that's what we try to do. So, thank you for subscribing. Watch what we're going to do at a million. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. Hopefully, we'll reach that mark. I never, uh, you know, I, I never just assume anything. But if things keep going the way they're going, you know, I think we'll reach it. So big giveaway then. So what am I going to do today? You know, you, you come here to hear mob stories. I know that. We got some great interviews coming up. Chaz Palminteri will be in the studio this week. The first uh, sit down in studio. He happens to be out here in LA. He contacted me, would love to sit down. You know, Chaz, Bronx Tale, analyzed this, whole bunch of stuff, talented, great actor. Can't wait to sit down with him. Armand DeSante, I've had a couple of conversations with him. I love Armand, brilliant actor, great in Gotti, 1996 Gotti. Just terrific, he did so many great films. He's gonna be coming on. Last week, I did a uh, sit down with Joe Pistone and uh, uh, I did it on his platform and uh, we had a great time and uh, as soon as uh, he tells me he's posting it, I'll put a link up so you can all watch it here uh, and we had a great time also. So you're going you're gonna to enjoy it. We got some good stuff coming up, trust me. So subscribe, keep looking in. We keep trying to you know, give you the best possible stuff that we can give you. What am I going to do today? You know, my birthday's coming up, May 27th. Some of you know it. I'm already getting birthday thank you know wishes and congratulations. I want to tell a little story. Um, and this came up 
because of the Frank Sinatra compound out in uh, Coachella Valley, which is in Palm Springs out here in California. And I want to tell you what happens. You know, you never know who you're going to meet in life. Networking in life is so important. You never try to burn bridges. You try to, you know, make good relationships because you never know, you know, who you're going to meet and what benefit you can be to them or they can be to you. So a couple of years back, I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm speaking at a church. Great church, great pastor. Uh, the church was right across the street from Trump's new hotel in Vancouver. Vancouver's a beautiful city, by the way. And I had given my testimony, spoke at the church. And uh, after I was done, you know, you go in the back room, you sign some books, and then you talk to people. And I was chatting with some people, and the pastor comes to me and he says, Mike, there's a man that wants to see you. Uh, he wants to thank you for giving your testimony. He enjoyed it. I said, great, let him come in. So we're in the green room. So the guy comes in. He's, uh, I think, 90 years old at the time. And uh, he's dressed very unassuming, you know, and a uh, small guy, you know, he's like, I don't know, five foot five, five foot six. Um, and he starts to talk to me and he compliments me and said, you know, he was very encouraged. He loved what I had to say and so on and so forth. And I said, great, you know, thank you very much. And very cordial, very unassuming, very humble. Then uh, as he's walking out, he says, Mike, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm leaving tomorrow. He said, what about tomorrow morning? I said, uh, well, my flight is at three in the afternoon, so I'm, I'm free in the morning. He said, I'd love for you to come up to my office. And I'm saying to myself, you know, this fellow has an office. He doesn't look like, you know, he's any kind of executive or anything. So um, I said, well, you know, I'll try. What time would that be? He said, how about 10 o'clock? And he gives me his address and he says, come up to the office. He says, I want to show you some things. So I said, OK. So the pastor comes in and he said to me, what did that fellow say to you? I says, well, he was a very nice man and he asked me to come up to his office. I don't know what kind of office he has or what he's doing or what. He says to me, the pastor, you're kidding. And I said, no, why? He says, do you know who that was? And I said, no. He says, his name is Jimmy Patterson. I said, okay, you know, what does that mean? It didn't mean anything to me. He said, he's just about the wealthiest guy in all of Canada. He's worth about $12 billion. I said, you gotta be kidding. I said, he's a nice old guy. I said, very unassuming. He says, Michael, one favor. I said, what? He says, bring me to the office with you. I said, okay, you're free to come. So he gives me the address, right? I have it. Next morning we go at 10. It's not only his office. He owns the whole building, right? And uh, it's me, the pastor, and my brother-in-law, Dean. So we go up to the, the office. He's up on the a beautiful, beautiful office, all windowed, overlooking the, uh, you know, the bay, the dock there. We had his yacht out in the back, I think 149, 150-foot yacht in the back, right? And I go up into the office and I got to tell you this, you know, I've seen some beautiful offices in my life in the World Trade Center, you name it, all over. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Magnificent is the only word I can use to describe it. And he had one wall, Jimmy did. He was dressed in a suit. I met his, uh, his assistant, uh, a wonderful woman by the name of Maureen. And great story, this woman was with him for 55 years. 55 years, when he first started out, 55 years ago, and uh, she must be a multimillionaire now, you know, with him. But um, on one wall, I got to tell you, it was his picture, Jimmy, with everybody that was everybody in the world at that time. I mean, every president, you know, every dignitary, actors, actresses, the heads of state, heads of, unbelievable. He was with all of them. And then he took me into his office at the time, and he says, I want to show you the next one that's going up on the wall. And it was him and Donald Trump. For those of you that don't like Donald, forget that. It was him and Donald Trump. Unbelievable. Well, we go into uh, one of his conference areas, and we're sitting down. And uh, he says, Michael, I just want to hear some mob stories. Do you believe this? There's a multi-billionaire who wants to hear some mob stories. And first, he brings some of his other people in. We're all sitting down, having a cup of coffee. I'm rattling off stories, telling things. And he's telling me about, you know, a relationship that he had early on in his life with a mob guy that was something in the car business with him. I don't remember exactly what the story was. But we were just talking, 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 just having a great time, right, with this guy. I was so impressed. And um, then after about two hours of that, right, he says, Mike, come into my conference room. We go into the conference room again. 
probably had to be 3,000 square feet, the conference room, a table like from here to, you know, the end of the wall. Unbelievable. And it was a huge screen like a movie theater. And uh, he's had a seat for me, a seat for my brother-in-law, a seat for the pastor, and um, darkens the room. The curtain goes up on the screen, and right on the screen it says, especially prepared for Michael Francis. Now, he did that from yesterday till the morning. And then it was about 20 minutes of everything that Jimmy had going on, all the, is the things that he owned. Unbelievable. I can't even get through it. It was hotels. He owns Ripley, believe it or not, the Guinness Book of World Records. I think he's the biggest distributor of magazines in North America. He has hotels that he, just unbelievable, you know, the, the, uh, the holdings that, that this man had. And uh, aside from that, just a, a wonderful, wonderful man. Just enjoyed him so much. So we became friends, you know, didn't do anything business-wise. We become friends. Cut to, next time I go up and speak, in Vancouver. I'm walking across the street with my wife and the pastor and who's following us but Jimmy again. And Jimmy says, you know, when we get to the Trump Hotel, that's where we, they put us because it's right across the street from a beautiful hotel, by the way. I don't care if you like Trump or not. Hotel was tremendous. The, the service was great. Oh, everything wonderful in a hotel. But anyway, Jimmy says to me, Mike, um, you ever want to go out on my yacht? And I said, yeah, why not? You know, Jimmy, he says, well, you know, book a couple of days and uh, you, you can go out. So I said, all right, let me look at my schedule. I go home, I call up Maureen and they set up a weekend on his yacht. People, I, I can't even tell you. He had a whole crew there. It was like that television show. There's some kind of television show about yachting or something. I don't know what it is. Never saw it, but I heard my kids talk about it. But I'm telling you that we had one of the best uh, three-day vacations of our lives. It, it is soup to nuts, everything. You had a gourmet chef on board. Every room was a suite with a bath. Just amazing. And look, you know, I've, I've done some great things in my life, but just the way this was set up. And then he had a book on, on the uh, yacht with everybody that he had entertained there. No money, wouldn't take a penny, wouldn't even let us tip anybody. This is the, the class that this guy has. And there was a whole crew, probably seven, eight, nine, ten people on there taking care of us. And there was only one rule on the boat. You couldn't t keep your shoes on. They had to give you these special slippers because the boat was immaculate. Yacht, I shouldn't say boat. But anyway, uh, the food, everything. You know, I had jet skis on board. We were jet skiing for hours. We went to all the different islands. The weather was beautiful. It was like a, a weekend to remember. We had such a great time. In the book, Oprah Winfrey, Jimmy Carter. I mean, I can't even think of all the names that he had entertained on that boat. That's the kind of guy he was. So, cut two, he says to me, Michael, what do, you, what do you think about Frank Sinatra? And I said, well, you know, look, I grew up with Frank Sinatra. My dad knew him well, the Copacabana. He sang, you know, the Italian-American Civil Rights League. I met him a couple of times, mostly when I was younger. You know, I love Sinatra. I love his music until today. He says, well, I want you to know that I bought the Frank Sinatra compound from Frank many years ago in Palm Springs. And I said, really? He says, and everything in that compound is just the way uh, Frank left it. He said, we didn't, he says, if a doorknob falls off, we put that exact doorknob back the same exact way. It's exactly the way, we, the way he left it. It's on Frank Sinatra Drive. I think it's 8,000 square feet. And the reason I'm bringing it up now because I got a call and it looks like that's where I'm going to spend my birthday this year. But I can't wait. I've never seen it before. I've never, never had the time to get down there. But we're going to try to make the time, whether it's then or, you know, a couple of weeks afterwards. So point being, I meet a guy that's so unassuming, have no idea, you know, uh, what he's all about. And it turned out to be a tremendous relationship. You know, networking in life is so important. You know, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know. You know, I'll tell you another quick thing. Okay, and there's a moral to this, and I'll get to it. Uh, cameo. I don't know if you ever heard of that cameo where people pay you to give a two-minute message, one-minute message. Well, I'm on Cameo, right? I was introduced to Cameo, and my wife actually introduced me to it. I gave a little word of encouragement to a young man uh, who was struggling with some challenges in his life. And, um, you know, I, I can relate to that. You know, I, my brother and sister had challenges in their life. So I, I tried to encourage him as much as I could in a minute, a half or two minutes. That was the end of that. We send it off. Next day, I get a phone call from somebody again uh, that I know for about 30 years. He's in the finance business. And he says to me, Michael, 
you did, uh, you know, this, this uh, cameo uh, word of encouragement to this young man. He says, well, his father happens to be a client of mine. He's a very wealthy guy. He's becoming very liquid, and he wants to invest in something, and maybe he, he's looking at uh, your slices and things like that. Out of nowhere. You don't know how these things happen sometimes, but, you know, the point is, I know this gentleman for 30 years, networking. You never know, you know, who you're going to meet and, and what kind of benefit, especially if you're in business. You know, try to keep those contacts. Try to never burn bridges. Try to, you know, uh, you know, always treat people the right way because it really can come back to benefit you at some point in time. And I've tried to do that throughout my life. Most of the time it works out. Um, so that's just a word to a wise. And we discussed this actually on our Zoom call with my whole crew and my inner circle the other day. You know, relationships in life are so important. You know, don't, don't burn bridges. You know, make relationships. So important. So, I guess that's it for today. You know, just a story I wanted to share. And you know, you're not always going to get mob stories out of me, people. You know, um, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this. You know, the mob story on YouTube is becoming a very crowded field. If you do some search, you're going to find a lot of guys on there that, you know, that have experiences and telling their stories. You all know Sammy. Sammy's a great storyteller, and he's got a lot of stories uh, that he's telling. So if you want to hear that mob stuff, you know, go to it with me. You're going to get a little bit of everything. When, uh, when I relate back, back to something, I'll talk about it. But, you know, I'm more interested in, uh, in bringing people on, letting them tell their stories. People that I think you know, have some kind of relationship to me or to what I'm doing or to the mob life in some way. Obviously, Chaz Palminteri uh, has some, uh, Armand DeSanti does. We had Ed O'Neill on. Ed was terrific. I got to tell you, he's one of the most beloved guys I've ever spoken with because the comments about him, married with children, modern family, some of the other things that he did, uh, people just love the guy, and it was a privilege and an honor and a pleasure for me to, to be able to sit down with him, going to have dinner with him in the coming weeks in Los Angeles. So we're going to try to bring you that kind of content, that kind of entertainment, that kind of uh, uh, you know, enjoyment to you all, and I hope you really do like it. Uh, I'm going to be asked about it again, so I'll throw it out there, the Sammy Gravano sit-down. Just stay tuned. That's all I can tell you. Stay tuned. You know, things are in the works. And uh, it's going to be very interesting if it happens, I'll tell you that. You know, Sammy and I are alike in some ways, very different in others. And it's going to be very interesting if it comes together. So we'll see what happens, but stay tuned. And we're not just trying to throw it out to whet your appetite. You know, sometimes things are a little complicated to put together, but I'm motivated to do it. So we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. All right. So that's it for today, my friends. Uh, how do I always leave you? I always leave you the same way from deep within my heart. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless you all. And you know I'll see you next time. Take care.